What are you doing here? You, you want to know about K means? Okay. Um, K means is a method of unsupervised image classification. Um, what it does is it takes an image and classifies all the pixels in that image into one of K classifications. Um, the way we start this out is input an image uh, like this one. And say we want to be able to tell our subject apart from the background and we want to be able to see what she's wearing. Um, that's three classifications, so K equals three. Um, we then want to set the initial cluster centers. These initial cluster centers must be vectors with the same number of elements as there are bands in the image. Since this is just a regular RGB um, digital picture, each cluster center will have three values. Um, the background is kind of close to white, so our C1 will equal 255, 255, 255. Um, her clothes are a bit darker, so we'll set C2 equal to just a plain 0, 0, 0. And her skin tone is somewhere in between, so let's just make it a general 100, 100, 100 value. The next step is to assign each of the pixels of the image to one of the classifications. Um, each pixel goes to the classification that it's closest to, and we do this using this equation. Where DC center 0 is the digital count of the center in the first band, DC center 1 is the digital count of the center in the second band, and so on. Now DC sub 0 XY is the digital count of the pixel at that XY location in the first band of the image. DC sub 1 XY is the digital count of the pixel at that XY location in the second band of the image, and so on. This distance is computed from the specific XY pixel to each of the cluster centers. All of these distances are saved in a distance array, and then the minimum value of this array is found. Whichever center had the minimum distance, in other words was the closest, to the pixel is the cluster to which this pixel is assigned. As I said before, you do this for every single pixel in the image. Once all the pixels are assigned to a cluster, the cluster centers are re-evaluated by taking the average of all the pixels in that cluster. Um, we see this in this equation here. Next, the difference between the old cluster center and this new cluster center we just calculated are found by using this equation here. The point of all of this is that we want the algorithm to find the natural cluster centers in the image. Um, we just loop through the algorithm again and again, replacing the old cluster centers with the new cluster centers, um, and reclassifying every picture in the image each time. We do this until the cluster centers stop moving. Once there's no more movement, we know that the natural cluster centers have been found, and we have our classified image. At this point, we assign each classification an arbitrary color, and we display our image. Here we see that the algorithm successfully separated the background from our subject and made it green. Then her clothes were clustered and displayed in red. Her hair and some of the darker features in her face were also classified as clothing, as their digital counts more closely match her clothes than they do her skin tone. Finally, the algorithm clustered and displayed her skin in blue. You'll notice that the highlights on her face turn green as their digital counts were closer to that of the background. Generally, this type of algorithm is used in remote sensing applications, where they fly a plane over some area of interest and take pictures. The main difference between remote sensing and what we did here is that in remote sensing, they generally take hyperspectral images. Hyperspectral images capture RGB like we did here, but they go beyond that well into the infrared wavelengths. This gives us hundreds of bands instead of just three that we used here. Um, what this allows us to do is have a lot more data to work with and allows our cluster to be much more refined and accurate. These remote sensing applications generally include picking out bridges, roads, buildings from images. I've also heard of a scenario where they flew a plane over a remote region of a forest where they suspected a marijuana growing operation was going on. Um, they captured their hyperspectral images and through classification were able to see the green marijuana plants in between all the green trees because these marijuana plants gave off unique signals throughout the entire spectrum that was captured. Um, so this is a pretty cool area of study that has applications all over the place. Hmm. Now that I've explained all this, I'm going to go back to getting ready for the day. See ya.